Do not attempt the training techniques you are about to see without consulting a professional. Tonight on Caesar 911, an ER vet with a miracle pit bull. Opal's got super blood. She saves almost every patient that she donates to. But when she's not saving lives, she's turning the hospital upside down. She panics whenever she's confined to any kind of cage. Oh, quit it. She growls and jumps so high, which then sets off my patients that are trying to rest. I can't have her in the hospital anymore. This is Caesar 911. Caesar's first 911 call comes from Natalie, who manages an animal hospital that is having big issues with the doctor's pet pit bull, Opal. Hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Welcome to my office. <laughs> Thanks. So how can I help you? Well, I have an emergency doctor. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. She does great for us. Her dog, Opal, is a blood donor. She's universal, and she's like saved every single patient oh, wow. so far, so it's amazing. Opal's got super blood. She saves almost every patient that she donates to. So she is a huge asset. All right, so and then amazing doctor, awesome dog. What's the problem? She's so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what she's going to do. You put her behind a crate, she growls and jumps so high, she barks like crazy, oh, quit it. which then sets off my patients that are trying to rest. We have lots of dogs trying to rest and recover from medical procedures, and Opal's behavior in the kennels is really hindering their recovery progress. There's um, times that we're in the conference room. If someone was to walk by the meeting doors, she just goes crazy. Lunges straight at the windows, barks, scratches, a dog, a person, it doesn't matter who it is. Feels bad. Yeah. So like a constant alert you have to be? Constant alert with Opal. It's really a catch-22, because Dr. Lassard can't keep Opal in the back in the kennels, because it disrupts the patients that are recovering. And she can't bring Opal into the office, because she barks and lunges at anything that walks by. We are an emergency clinic. Yeah. Anything can come in at any time. And I need Dr. Lassard to be 100% on her game and focus on that patient coming in. And with Opal jumping, growling, barking like crazy, she puts our clients at risk every day. Yeah. We're at the point where I have to tell Dr. Lassard Opal cannot come to work anymore. This situation really moves me because this dog, Opal, actually saved dog's life by donating blood. I really hope I can help. So how can I see this? How can I observe? I feel like a doctor now. Well, the hospital's right down the street. Yeah. And she's working. Her, what am I going to see right now? I think when we show up right now, she'll be in the conference room, and then you can see how Opal reacks. All right. Can you drive with me? Absolutely. Right. Let's you. go. Caesar and Natalie head to the animal hospital so Caesar can observe Opal's behavior. The dilation, or you could say this thing. So if you hide right behind here, right here, you'll be able to see her in action. It shuts. Opal. Opal, leave it. Oh, brother. Wow. That's dangerous. Opal. All right, let's go. We got to do this. Go. Let's, let's go, go inside. Doctor? Oui. Wow. I'm Dr. Claude Lessard. I'm an ER vet at Veterinary Medical and Surgical Group in Orange County. Great. We're going to ultrasound this guy. I have a two year old pit bull named Opal. Opal came into my work uh, with her litter mates. They were all sick with parvo. They were treated there. And then I eventually fostered her and adopted her. And she was actually raised in the hospital for the most part. Well, Opal is an amazing dog. Uh, she's a blood donor at work. She's saved actually several lives. But unfortunately, Opal is very disruptive at my workplace. She is very aggressive and panics whenever she's confined to any kind of cage. She will start barking. She starts bouncing off the wall. She's jumping at the cage door, will not stop. 
I constantly worried about the patients. Uh, I mean, they're there to recover or to rest before surgery, and then there's this dog going crazy that's just stressing everybody out in the hospital. Also, I'll bring Opal into the conference room, and then suddenly somebody walks outside the windows, and she will lunge at that person, and it takes a split second for that to happen. Opal, hey! I've tried to correct Opal's behavior, trying therapies and anti-anxiety medication, but it didn't help. This has been going on for long enough. It's everybody's getting impatient and, and not so tolerant anymore of her. I have to admit, as the vet in charge during my shift, if this was not my personal dog, I would ask that this dog would not be in the hospital because she's disruptive because she has a potential to save a life when she's at work. But unfortunately, if we can't fix that problem, then I won't be able to continue to bring her to work, and it's just a lose-lose situation. How do you normally control that? Uh, normally, I would get her back on leash. OK, let's put her on the leash. Sit on. Hey. Opal. Hey. Come on. What do you think? How, do you, how does she feel? She's calming down, but she's still super alert. That's calming down? That's the start of it. OK. Opa was anything but calm under Dr. Lazar. I need to see how intense the situation was under my supervision. So I have my team walk more dogs by the window. Here, bring me the dog, bring me the dog. It's a little distracted. See how she's paying attention over there and not here? There we go, right there. Hey. That's what I wanted. Bring it, bring the dog back. Give me these people back. This is like a surgery. There you go. Stop, tell her to stop. There you go, this is calm. Well, that, that was amazing. <laughs> this is an overexcited dog, but there is hope because she reacted to my correction. There you go, right there. Hey, by going into a calm submissive state. So when I came in, I saw this dog that was super excited, out of control, right? Too fast. Any of us could have get bitten. If she can't get to what she is chasing, she's going to redirect this eventually. And that becomes very dangerous. Hearing Caesar say that he's seeing the issues, he's seeing how serious those issues are, and he's wanting to help. So I'm, I'm really glad and thankful for that. All right. Yeah. So making sense, though, do doctor? Yeah. This We're is the kennel? Go straight to the bear. Now Caesar wants to work with Opal on the other big problem her behavior when she's put in a kennel. So number one, I will never put a dog excited. So she's at a level three of excitement. Then I close the door. Now she gets anxious. So I need to get her into a calmer state. Yeah. This is bad. This is going to change. Just the way she looks is too intense, especially a pit. Especially. Yeah, that's better. I was able to bring Opal into a calm state, but now I need to test her by bringing another dog near her. Come on, lady.
We made some progress with Oppo. I was able to bring her to a commerce state, but we haven't yet achieved this stopping the barking and jumping. This girl is gonna take some serious time. I had to work with her. Yeah. 24-7, 24-7. <laughs> I mean, I figured that probably was gonna be what's needed, so I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think that's what she needs. Yeah. I'm really glad that Caesar to bring uh, Opal with him uh, because I think that's what she needs to get better. His patience is incredible and she needs somebody that's gonna work with, with her a lot. So I, I know that's what she needs. Obviously, I'm super sad to know that she's not gonna be home tonight. I have other dogs, but like, I mean, Opal is definitely special and super close to me in the house. So I'm gonna miss her. See you ladies later. Thank you. Opus a very excited dog with tons of energy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drain some of that energy, both mentally and physically. Normally what I do when I go on the swimming pool is I put a leash, I ask the dog to go on the ramp, bring it down. This way I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna skip that part and I'm gonna bring her in. So it creates a shock because she doesn't know how she got there. So the more she goes to that, the mind drains. I'm gonna have her on the side of me and I'm gonna wait until she completely just become very, very um, slow with her strokes. Here we just wait until she switches. There you go. This is the equivalent of a lap pool, and it's a current coming from the other side of the pool, but the human doesn't really go anywhere. It usually takes 15 minutes for a dog to show a change in the energy level. I really want this dog to be absolutely drained. So what we're gonna see is before she actually gets tired, she's gonna do a, a fast movement, and that's how we know she, she entered into the wall. There you go, there you go. I'm actually learning what it takes to, to drain her. So now she's getting, she, she's getting uh, desperate. Desperate makes them, makes them release energy. You see this slowly? Yeah. Yeah. Slow down. They told me Opal had super blood, but she also had super stamina. That took a long time. But I think she's finally tired. So now I want to see how she does in the kennel. Just placing. It's just like I'm placing this dog that is getting too tired into a better place. Ready, my friend? I'm coming. That's all right. Leave it open. Sit down with it. And wait till she relaxes. Now that she's tired, I want her to relay the experience of the kennel with a relaxing place. But if she acts out, I need to come up with another plan. Hey. The tiredness is gonna hit because now she's physically tired. There you go, see? She just got into, wow, I'm looking. You can see now how the eyes are closing now. The tiredness just hit her. Okay, so now this is all her. I just gave her a little bit of direction, very much, very much. Look, I'm sitting down, teaching her. I just need a margarita right by, right about now. Well, Bloody Mary, I'm a Bloody Mary guy. Look at that, look at that. Look at those eyes closed. Look at that, she can't help herself. This is a huge difference from the first time I saw Opal in the kennel. It took a lot of exercise and a tons of patience, but now Opal can associate the kennel with a happy place to rest. You need to know what the dog is thinking. You need to know what the dog is feeling. It's like playing chess. You need to know when to move certain pieces. 
and then chess mate. This is chess mate. I'm very pleased. The next day, Caesar heads back to the animal hospital to work with the medical team. It's gonna take a village to help Oppo at the hospital, so I'm going to work first with the staff, then I'm gonna work with the doctor. Oppo needs consistent direction from everyone to keep her calm so she can keep continue saving lives. Okay, so I'm moving because I'm demonstrating an excited dog, any movement they follow. Yeah, she can't follow. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't mind, just get up, and she's probably going to move. If she moves, you send her back. Go, go, go. Tell her to go back. Yeah. Bring me the dog, bring me the dog. The hospital staff did great. All the exercise at the DPC really paid off to make Oppo a more relaxed dog. Now we need to see if she stay relaxed when all the dogs pass by the window. That always set her off in the past. Look, the dog passing by. I can't believe she's not moving. I know. Yeah. We're just gonna transfer this state of mind inside a crate. Now that the staff has been able to keep Opal calm in the conference room, Caesar wants to work with them and Dr. Lassard in the kennel. Opal has never behaved in the hospital kennel. First, I want the staff to correct Opal when she gets excited, just like I taught them. Oh, she got it. Your turn. That was good. Your turn, doctor. You get that she hasn't seen me like yet. Like nah, there, she's probably gonna react. That's the challenge. Right. That's the challenge. Why do I feel like this is not gonna work? I was definitely nervous following everybody's perfect execution. I know it can work, but I've never gotten Opal to stay calm in the kennel before. You did it, doctor. Good it job. Took a job. It, yeah, it took a little longer for her. Because you represent excitement. Yeah. Yeah. I was impressed with Dr. Lazar because she had a harder job because she represents excitement to Opal. But she had the patience to wait Opal out and she returned to a calm state. I'm really proud of them. I'm just hoping they can do it without me. So this is the homework for the office. We learned that Opal needs tons of exercise. So take her on really long bike rides. When she comes here, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. When till she comes down, when you go into that conference room, just be prepared, you know, that she might growl or whatever she does, somebody have to address that. And then definitely the kennel, it's boundaries. We all learn a lot today and it's amazing to see Opal uh, calm in the hospital really for the first time. Uh, I think we're all gonna work really hard. I don't wanna let Opal down and I don't wanna let Caesar down. Good. Sounds great. Thank awesome. you. Can't Thank wait. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes! I'm excited. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> I feel your muscle. We're here for you. Dr. Lassard and her team agree to document their progress. The team needs to succeed at keeping Opal calm, or she will not be allowed back to the hospital, where she saves countless dogs' lives by donating blood. After a week of working on Caesar's homework assignments, the doctor is in the house. Dr. Lassard, Natalie, and Opal meet Caesar at the DPC to show him their progress. Please, come this way and let him roam. 
When I first met Opo, she was excited and disruptive. She was actually interfering with the other sick animals and recovery. She was also distracting the doctors from doing their jobs. I really hope they have succeeded with the homework I gave them because this dog is a blood donor and is a lifesaver. I don't want her to lose her job because she's kicked out of the hospital. So how are you guys doing? Pretty How's good. Pretty good. good. All right, let's watch. Yep. I want to see you guys oh, in action. Oh, this is going to be fun. Opal on a bike. It took me 45 minutes to tire Opal out in the pool. So riding a bike is a perfect way for Dr. Lazar to exercise Opal before she brings her to the hospital. So much fun, huh? Yeah, she's good with it. And I realized that there's activities that both Opal and I enjoy together. So I'm trying to do a lot more of that. All right. Conference room. Mm -hmm. See that right here? What, you, what do you see? She, she, looks, she looks nervous. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you got to provide she that. She wasn't calm and assertive. So that's why she didn't go into the whole thing. She eventually did it. But the reason why she's not getting it and becoming mm -hmm. a little bit more closer is because the human is not provided calm. Yeah, so this is good things for people to watch because a lot of times we don't see ourselves because we're in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the kennel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good. There you go. Very good. You feeling yeah. good? Yeah. No, it's been, it's been incredible. Excited. It's yeah. nice. You have a, a, a direction that you know how to implement, and most important, everybody in the, uh, in the clinic knows how to, mm -hmm. you know, help you. Opal is a completely different dog. It's amazing, it's great, it's less stressful. I don't have to worry about her getting out or her hurting herself or hurting others, so it's not a stressful state anymore. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate so it, Doctor, much. thank you so much. I think the most important thing I've learned uh, from the experience with Caesar is to be calm and be patient. I'm super happy of the result. I mean, her quality of life, I think, at the hospital is a lot better. My quality of life is better, and I'm less distracted and can do my job. So for him to help me and my dog was, um, was pretty extraordinary. Come on, let's go. I always wanted to be a vet. So I have a lot of respect, a lot of admiration, a lot of gratitude for veterinarians. And when I get to help one of them, I get to, um, to pay forward. Opie. Bye, ladies. For me, this scenario, besides helping beautiful Opal, is to give a vet a prescription of how to actually help her dog to donate uh, not just blood, but also great energy. I really like it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.